Hi, I'm Dr. Jerry Hesh. I'm a physical therapist and I work at Hesh Institute in Aurora, Colorado, close to Denver. And our presentation today is of cuboid syndrome. And uh, this is my client, Matt, a 35-year-old, very athletic male, who injured his cuboid when he was walking on a trail. You were also doing some running? Trail run. Okay. And when you were running, were you were you emphasizing weight bearing on the outside of the foot? I or, was. Okay. And why were you doing that? To avoid stepping on stone on the on the uh, ball under the big toe. Because you had a little bit of discomfort there. Yeah, the sesamoids. Okay. I know about. Okay. I've heard in the past, but alrighty. More of a preventative thing. They they actually haven't hurt recently. It was just okay. more of a I don't want to hurt them again type of thing. Got it. Okay. And then you had an event where you had an abrupt force go through the foot. I think so. It's, yeah, yeah, I do recall um, a big boulder. I had to jump off downhill side, and uh, I feel like that set off. Sure, sure. And you went to urgent care and got an X-ray. Yep. And did you get any specific diagnosis? Uh, negative on the brakes. So. Meaning, yeah, no brakes. Yep. No fractures. Correct. Okay. All right. So you self-diagnosed yourself with cuboid syndrome having done research. Right. And your pain pattern is beneath the cuboid behind the behind the, the head of the fifth metatarsal. Right. And sometimes the base. It, yep. The that, base. That is the center for sure. And then sometimes it refers up the metatarsal, the fifth. Uh-huh. And then just really could be anywhere across the whole foot. Okay. But and the pain is mostly on the plantar surface of the foot. Uh, the bottom. Bottom of it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we check mobility of your of your fifth metatarsal and it and it glides forward beautifully and has up and down mobility as well and um so that is that is nice and mobile and then when we come on to cuboid i'm trying to induce up and down motion and there's no give okay so it doesn't go up it doesn't go down except for the slightest amount of give very very slight um the other thing we find is that your subtalar joint the joint where the the heel, the calcaneus, and the talus. This is the back of the ankle. So the talus is this big bone in the middle, okay? That joint is, is stuck because when I grab your heel and I try and rotate it outward, there's no give, there's no movement, okay? We'll show you movement on the other side shortly. And when I rotate it inward, you have good movement, okay? When I bring the heel in, called inversion, you have good mobility there, and then I give it over pressure to test the ligament. Ligament, are strong. ligament is strong. When I try and glide your, your foot forward to test for a typical uh, ankle, ankle inversion injury, you have a little bit of give. Okay, very subtle. Um, when I compare on this side, it's very subtle also, so that's no concern to me. Sure. Uh, but when I try and move the heel outward, there's no movement on this side. So let's come over and film the other foot. And this one has outward motion, which was lacking on the left. And then when we isolate cuboid, I can just grab your cuboid and go up and down. There's nice free up and down mobility. Sure. Okay. And uh, so a distinct difference from side to side and it's going to be important if we're going to restore mobility in your cuboid bone. This is a right, ankle, right foot and ankle. If we're going to restore mobility in your left cuboid, we have to restore the mobility of the calcaneus. That's my big freak flag. I'm, I'm the guy that says, no, no, don't just, don't just whip the cuboid from, from, from underneath upward. That might gap the joint, you know, and let it restore some mobility temporarily. But for those who don't respond to a classical cuboid whip maneuver, then what they need is to increase the rotational mobility in the subtalar joint, the ankle, the joint below the ankle. Because here is your ankle, here's your calcaneus, I'm stumbling in my language here. Here's the heel bone, the calcaneus, and you can see it directly articulates with the cuboid very large joint and if you if you study it you realize that's really designed for rotation in both directions in two directions okay so we don't want to just manipulate your cuboid we want to free up the calcaneus and oftentimes the cuboid is then automatically freed up one more motion i'm going to test is movement of 
the navicular. That's this bone right here, and it's another bone that rotates a lot. So navicular and cuboid work hand in hand, and calcaneus and cuboid work hand in hand. So I'm going to test midfoot mobility here, and this feels to me a little bit restricted. I agree. So I, was gonna, I haven't told you, it, I, in the last couple of days I have felt a little bit of a strain throughout in this guy. Okay, okay. So here we're testing midfoot mobility and I can move it freely. I can move it to an end point and I can still get a little bit of motion. This one I try and rotate it medially and it gets stuck immediately, okay? So, you know, I'll go ahead and film my treatment of you. It's pretty straightforward, but it does take a hands-on skill set that few clinicians have. Um, let's have you lay on your stomach and then I'll want your foot off the table. Good. And so what I do is I distract the calcaneus. So I'm gapping the subtalar joint or the talocalcaneal joint. I block motion in the tibia and fibula. And then I'm going to twist your foot outward. Or I'm twisting the calcaneus to the right. The back of the calcaneus goes to the right and the for formal terminology is abduction. So I am abducting your calcaneus with your talus but also on the talus. When we run out of movement there then we're uh, then we're moving uh, calcaneus on the talus and I just do about 30 oscillations of that. Gentle, gentle oscillatory movement at end range. And now let's have you lie on your back. And then what I do, I'll show you that movement is now restored. Okay? And that E version, that outward movement is now restored. Okay? So we come back and capture the the cuboid and now you have beautiful up and down movement. So I did not even have to treat your cuboid to restore the motion. That's awesome. Okay, and now I'll test that midfoot motion, and now I take it to a greater range, and I take it to an end point, and I can still overpressure it. So do you want to walk on it and see how you feel? Keep filming. Sure. How would you test it to see if it's better? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, would squatting down help test it? Maybe. Um, <coughs> I mean, typically things that hurt. Uh-huh. There's so much hurting right now, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so typically um, those things would have hurt. Probably. Cert certainly doing things like this. Yeah. Like time to hurt. Oh. Okay. How is it? That's what I wrote in the notes was that. The yeah. e e everting it. Yeah. If I point my toes down and out. So your plantar flexing. Typically hurts. In there, I, I okay. feel it just a hair, but I mean, okay. not like it would have been 20 minutes so, ago. So. so that movement is is better. Yeah. Good. So I just need to teach you how to keep that motion. That's amazing. And you can bend your, uh, you can bend your leg on the on a piece of furniture on the sofa maybe, and grab that heel. Of course, I'm on the wrong leg, but you know, um, grab that heel mm -hmm. and distract it downward. Okay, so I'm pushing towards the bottom of the foot. I'm pushing the heel towards the bottom of the foot and after about 30 seconds of distracting it you can twist it twist the heel to the right okay so the foot goes to the outside and do that 30 times okay but there are more complex restrictions of the cuboid which you'll find on YouTube on some of my videos there or some of my writings and sometimes you have to treat the fibula you have to treat the front you have to treat the talus in the ankle joint also called the mortis or also called the uh, tibio taylor joint. Um, it also, also makes a joint with the fibula. So sometimes the, the motion pattern is more complex, but this was a simple, straightforward presentation. And I think I'm correct when I say that you need to mobilize the subtalar joint to free up the cuboid. And so I'm kind of anti-cuboid whip. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, 
that's a whole long story we could debate about, but uh, <laughs> I, I always test the upward and downward movement after I free up the subtalar joint. Is that fair? Sure. So I give consideration to the cuboid whip, but often find it's, it's not necessary after you unlock subtalar. So any questions? No, I mean, if, um, if it starts hurting again, let's say, what do I do then? Just, just if I... Well, I'll have you come back once. Okay. You know, we'll, we'll wait a few days sure. and have you come back, make sure it's behaving, sure. and I'll teach you a little bit of strengthening also. Cool. So thank you.